nomination court uh, that sat yesterday. Um, I'd like to just give a bit of background before I get into the meat uh, of today's press briefing. And in so doing, I want to just shed light on some of the processes that we were engaged in in the lead up to yesterday because this is pertinent uh, to the state of affairs that we've witnessed uh, since about nine o'clock yesterday. Now the first point to note is that President Nelson Chamisa in his agenda address uh, earlier this year, the start of the year, he indicated that this is the year that we'd secure a citizen's victory for change. And two of the pillars of that citizen's victory for change included a citizen's campaign, which we're going to be short, uh, shortly launching. But the more important one for our purposes today is the fact that we'd secure citizen representatives. Pursuant to that address, since the 5th of April, we've been engaged in a rigorous process uh, to select such candidates. And we said we want to depart from the problem-ridden uh, primary election process that had caused a number of problems over the years and the experience of all parties has shown that this process of primaries is not optimal. And so we developed a model with the assistance of our lawyers, our ex experts and also international best practice and we came up with a four-stage template which included firstly nomination of candidates by citizens uh, and then secondly uh, stakeholder consultation in communities the third step was obviously vetting for security uh, uh, and also community involvement. And then finally was the citizen caucuses. The essence of the template was that all four of these factors would be the criteria upon which an independent selection panel, uh, which had been chosen from a, a wide range of community leaders, would then make a selection of who would stand uh, both in, well, starting with the presidency. Uh, we all know that President Nelson Chamisa put himself up for nomination and he won that resoundingly. I think there were over 36,000 uh, nominations across, across the 10 provinces in his favor. And then obviously we uh, required the same to be done for the 210 National Assembly seats and then the 1,970 uh, local authority seats as well. And then obviously we've got party lists, something that I won't get into too much detail. Now, our main goal, our primary goal was to ensure that we beat uh, our record from 2018 or the opposition's record from 2018. In 2018, the opposition failed to field all 210 National Assembly uh, candidates. They only managed, I think, 207, it was about three short. I'm pleased to report today that the Triple C has fielded 210 candidates. In other words, we've got a candidate for each of the seats in National Assembly. Uh, we have got over 1,900 and about 40 out of the 1,970 of the local authority seats, although the elections directorate is still working on the full compilation of those numbers. Uh, but this is by far a huge improvement uh, from the past. But the background to this is uh, people do seem to forget that Zanupia thought that they were finished with the main opposition. They thought that with the help of uh, Douglas Munzor and others, they had decimated the main opposition, the true people's voice, and replaced it with a puppet opposition. They took away our building, our HQ, they took away our representatives. In fact, uh, the mantra from the press and the citizens around that time, 2019, 2020, is, oh, you've got no plan. You've got no plan for in infiltration. Uh, Mr. Monzora is ahead of you. We managed to override all of that to come out a stronger force as the Triple C. And as you all recall, on the 24th of January, uh, 2022, the Triple C was formed. After that, we went into the by-election period, where again, the Triple C did resoundingly well. On the same model, this is how the citizens uh, selected the representatives, and we all know the glory stories in Bulilima and other places where we got community-focused candidates to represent uh, the Triple C and citizens, and they've done exceptionally well uh, in those roles. So we then come to the process today. We sat down and we said there are a few things that we want to guard against. Firstly, we want to ensure that there's no infiltration in the process. 
The second issue we sought to guard against was to ensure that the person uh, who would have been selected in each and every community was grounded within that community, had a presence there, and had a following uh, there, and a record of community involvement. The next thing, uh, and our legal team, part of uh, which is here today, took additional <clears throat> steps to ensure that every single T and every single, every single T was crossed and every I was dotted to make sure that our papers were signed properly, our security team was also working around the clock to ensure that there were no problems uh, around double candidates and so on. And I'm pleased to report that we succeeded. And what I'm going to tell you today is testament to the fact that Zanupir failed to compromise our own signatories. They failed to penetrate our own systems. So what did they go and do? They went and forged our logo. They literally took a photocopy uh, and then they stuck it there, and then they forged signatures, and then they created the 20 odd uh, double candidates that you see across the country for National Assembly and a number of others throughout the wards. So I want to put it beyond doubt that anywhere where you see more than one triple C representative, only one of them was duly nominated by us and properly signed for. Now, it's important to note in this regard that around 9 a.m. yesterday, uh, a sting operation began to unfold and we received across the country reports both from the security teams, our elections team that had started filing, uh, and some of our intelligence that there was a state-driven sting operation which has now affected 15 constituencies in Harare, three constituencies in Bulawayo, one in Kariba, and one in Marondera. And then also we've got a number of wards affected, uh, including one in Harare, one in Mashingo, 29 in Blawayo, a number, of, a number in Chinoy, and so on. And the modus operandi is the same. Investigations uh, that were carried out by elections department, uh, including going to ZEC today to check the specimens of the forms uh, that were filed by the fraudulent um, parties, uh, revealed today that they weren't using our logo. Our logo was very clear. As a security measure, we ensured that our logo was embossed. It wasn't just a photocopy. So you actually had uh, you know, the logo stuck on and it was embossed. So it's something that you, if you didn't have that template logo, you couldn't file uh, another candidacy in respect of uh, any candidate. Even our signatories were very clear and we sent the specimen forms uh, to, to Zek in good times, uh, in good time. Now, what we have unearthed particularly is, and I'm going to actually read out the, the, 20, um, the 20 candidates, and I say candidates in quotation marks because they have not been duly elected in terms of the electoral law because of these forgeries. They don't belong to the triple C. And initially, I, I saw some social media reports which seemed to suggest that while well, there's another triple C that's filing, no. All of these are filed on behalf of the Citizens Coalition uh, for change, but by people that we don't know. They purport to sign on behalf of X and Y, but that person did not sign for them. And in some places, they actually got the designated signatory wrong. And in some instances, we actually have a problem where the person who um, whose signature is uh, reflected says, well, my money was paid, my forms uh, were submitted, but I'm not the one who did it. There's someone clearly behind that. But not to worry, uh, a clear st strategy um, has been designed by our legal security and elections team that's going to address this. The first thing that we want to make clear, and to the extent that any state institutions, I don't want to mention names at this stage, are involved in the sting operation is that if these people are not arrested it means that you know beyond any doubt it's a it's a sting operation and so what we can guarantee the citizens is we are going to leave no stone unturned to ensure that these malified persons are removed from lists representing the triple c we are in charge of our own lists the president was very clear about what our logo is nobody gets to decide on our behalf who's going to stand on behalf of this triple C. And we know that ultimately, whatever interloper parties 
uh, are involved, ZANU PF is ultimately behind us, in, behind this. And what we know for sure is that the whole intention was to uh, create an impression that the triple C is at sixes and sevens. Uh, we've been saying for a very long time that we figured ZANU PF out. And one of the big concerns that ZANU PF has is that uh, President Nelson Chamisa and his team have figured ZANU PF out with the result that, you know, they've had to resort to fraud because they couldn't compromise our signatories. They've had to resort to forgery because they could not pen penetrate our systems, which is why we found ourselves here today. So what I'm just going to do um, is read out the list of those who are unauthorized persons who've been named. And obviously, uh, we're taking all the steps in terms of the Electoral Act uh, and other legal remedies to ensure that these names are removed from the ballot. And I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to start with Harare. In Harare, we had someone by the name of Irvin Nyaningwe, who purported uh, to have been uh, representing Harare Central, and Malvin, Raz Malvin Razaru, Harare East, Trouble Hasha, Harare South, George Magweta, Harare South. And so you'll actually see from Harare South that there are three triple C candidates, yet we all know that Maim Sonza was the duly nominated uh, candidate. Harare West, we had a Farai Pazarandora, a Lloyd Sande in Hatcliffe, an admire Adam Griza in Hatfield, Terence Kumbula in Hunyani, Didmus Bande, Epwet South, Nyashadzashe Chutoro, Chutungwiza North, Shepherd Karira Mombe, Chutungwiza South, Tichawana Nikadzino in Churu, Energy Tanaka Matika, Warren Park, Jonathan Machopoto, Mount Pleasant, Freddie Michael um, Sarirevu, St. Mary's, Christmas Gorem Sandu, Sunningdale. In Bulawayo, we've got Dikilizwe uh, Chuma, uh, who purported to file on behalf of uh, Ntumbane constituency. In Kariba, we had Andrew Mtsao. In Mashingo, there was a Frank Chirairo. In Marondera, we had a Mishik Manere. Now, by whatever means, each of the 20 candidates or 20 persons uh, that I've called out is not a duly authorized nominee of the Triple C. Their representation on our list is a forgery and it's a fraud. We're taking the necessary criminal, civil, and other steps to ensure that they're removed from our, our ballot. We've also been uh, engaging ZEC. We're taking our remedies in terms of the electoral law to ensure that they're removed uh, from the ballot. I think um, the last thing that I just want to make reference to is that we are firing full steam ahead. The other positive story uh, that comes out of this, we saw other political actors and outfits failing to feel it, field enough candidates because they didn't have the funds. But thank you so much to, the number, to a number of chain champions who pulled money together to ensure that we didn't only have uh, money to field our president, but also each of the candidates that stood. Obviously, in our wards, we also have a number of local authorities where they're double candidates as well, and the same legal action is being taken. But rest assured, we're on top of it. We're going to ensure that these people don't appear on the ballot. Blessed be Flamme, uh, I just saw TV and radio. Now, I just wanted to understand, you said that this is a steam operation, but some of these names that you have actually called out are people who have been working with and for Triple uh, C and participated in your primary elections. Now, how did these people who have been in China become a sting operation? They become a sting operation because they're actually victims of the fraud. If you speak to a number of them, they'll actually say, I don't know who paid the money on my behalf. So how do you explain papers filed on behalf of Blessed Nflanga? He wasn't there. He was actually saying that I didn't participate in the process. So the question is, who filed on his behalf? We know who those people are, and we're actually making criminal reports against those people. I don't want to say too much at this point, but they certainly are still part of the sting operation. And that's what gives it a little bit of quote-unquote credibility, but that's the whole essence of fraud. It remains a misrepresentation. The bottom line is the signatures that appear on that list are forged. None of our designated signatories sign those forms. The logo that appears on that form, whether you're internal or not, the logo that's being used on that form is a complete fraud. It's a forgery. So the bottom line at the end of the day is that form and that candidate submission is a complete forgery and what we call it law, a complete invalidity and nullity and it's going to be dealt with in terms of the objection procedure in the Electoral Act. Yes.
uh, effort and secure SABC news. Um, you just mentioned uh, 20 constituencies countrywide, but in Arare, I think when I went to the magistrate's courts in the morning, I counted about 20. You left out uh, Airport South, Sengeza East, Harare West. I just want to understand. No, I did actually mention Harare West. Oh, sorry, um, there are 15, uh, but yes. the, the, the bottom line is what, this. What of the constituencies that you have left out, uh, are, are you then saying those candidates do belong to the uh, Triple C? Or no. What's your position on so the Triple C has filed 210 candidates. So if there's more than one, they're not our member. We filed exactly 210 duly nominated candidates. In Harare, um, while there are 15 constituencies uh, represented, sometimes they put not a, a double candidacy but a triple. I made reference to Harare South, for example, where there are three. So even though 15 constituencies are represented, more people are, are involved in the fraud. But the bottom line is it remains a fraud. If the fraud is even greater than this, our lawyers are going to deal with it. At the end of the day, we've got a complete uh, duplicate of our submission and our logo. So if someone has a photocopy of the logo as opposed to the real embossed thing, all of that is, is fraudulent. Yes, I'll take three more. Yes, ma'am. Mm, my name is Ruben Bomchenja from the News Works. Um, you mentioned that you filed for or maybe 1,941. Approximately. approximately. The full report is yet to come to the elections yes. directorate. Yes. But the NPF has already said they have won uncontested in 53 words. What's your comment on that? I'm saying that we have at least 1,940. Our elections directorate will come with the, with the full figures. But the bottom line is we've got a sizable number, especially for a party that Zanupia thought it had decimated. We certainly have more than any other opposition party can ever dream of. Everyone's forgotten that Munzura took all the money, took all the things. Not that that's our standard, our threshold. Our standards are a lot higher than that. Um, but just to point out that they thought they'd buried us and yet here we are. They're developing all these sting operations and losing sleep every single night to try and destroy us. They will not succeed. I'll just take two more. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, Leo Mnende from uh, NewsLogo.com. Uh, how receptive was Zek to your uh, to your complaints over this quote-unquote fraud? I mean, they know the law. They heard us. And the, the, the good thing about these things is you file your specimen logo in advance. And so uh, at law, we say the evidence speaks for itself. Zek, at the end of the day, is an administrative authority. They've got the obligation to act lawfully, reasonably, and fairly under Section 68 of the Constitution. If they fail to act in accordance with their own laws, we know the remedies that are available to us and steps will be taken. But I'm sure they have an interest in ensuring that, in ensuring that we've got a free, fair, credible, and verifiable election. It's not in their interest to have these fraudulent submissions. Uh, made and I'm sure we'll come to an accommodation, but if we don't, we'll be left with no option but to take the remedies provided for at law. Yes, um, uh, we've been seeing um, uh, or, or doing rounds on the social media a, a funny uh, political party saying Jin Jedu Shagapinda, something like that, more or less of a triple C with forces. Uh, can you confirm on record that this political party has, has actually been? Uh, Julie filed uh, as, as, as Zach, is it there? Well, or these are just social media, social media uh, mischief? Only Zanu PF and Varakashi will come up with something as bogus and dubious as that. But we're aware that they're doing everything within their power to try and impersonate us, to try and uh, forge our logo. It, it just won't work. The people know who their leaders are. So even if they, um, I, there was another one, Chinu Chedu Chine Chimuti or whatever yeah, it is, whatever it is, it won't work. Is he Everybody, Zek or Zek? Well, no, I'm not logistics. Zek. Only Zek can speak to who's filed which nominations. All I can speak for is the Triple C because that's my mandate. What I know is the Triple C has filed the Citizens Coalition for Change Triple C, the only valid Triple C, and you can't forge our logo, you can't forge our name, um, has filed 210 candidates. Anyone who's trying to impersonate us, it's a sign of desperation, it's a sign of fear. It's a, it's a sign that there are sixes and sevens. How do we try and scuttle these people? Only a party that knows it's not popular resorts to such underhanded tactics. You don't hear about this in any other country in the world. What's beyond any doubt is that zanu -PF can never win a free and fair election in this country, which is why all these electoral mob practices are being unearthed. I'll take one more question because of our time. But if there is none... Uh, how yes. many of these 20 have you engaged? Oh, we've actually done our investigations to cover all of them, especially some that are known to us. And that's actually aided our investigations. And I think uh, by this press conference and through those engagements and in writing, we're putting them on notice that 
this is a fraud uh, this is a forgery it's a fraud it's a crime at law they all know the meaning of that uh, certainly we are they're not duly nominated candidates on behalf of the triple c even if you are a chain champion if someone creates fraudulent papers and says this is for fadzai maheri i may be a chain champion all i want but at the end of the day someone has per perpetrated a fraud i'm not saying the named persons perpetrated the fraud but someone has perpetrated a fraud and i think the law is very clear about who carries out the investigations in that regard and will present the evidence that we have to the police and other state institutions, especially ZEC, to ensure that the position is rectified. We can't go to the election on the basis of lies. We simply won't tolerate that. We've worked so hard to ensure that this precise double candidate thing doesn't happen. And the only thing that ZANU-PF could come up with is to forge our papers. In the olden days, they try and infiltrate, they pay our signatories, but now they've resorted to forgery because they could not get to the signatories. They simply didn't have that information because it was a closely guarded, um, redacted, a pool of information okay so thank you very much thank you very much for coming at late notice and we'll keep continue to to engage